Hey everybody, I wanted to create this little mini-series to highlight neat software that I've found useful over the years with my home lab. While this series is not entirely focused on specifically open source or free software, that will be a lot of it. So for this first entry in the Software Spotlight series, let's take a look at a neat storage tool, rclone. rclone is a command line utility that allows you to interact with data no matter where it is stored. rclone can run on Mac, Linux, Windows, they even list Solaris as being supported. There is a third-party GUI version of the tool that I have used and had good luck with. However, that tool has not been updated since 2020, and I am not sure if it's still in development. Update. While filming this, I found out that there is an experimental GUI for our clone built in now as well. I have not had a chance to test this as my needs have not required a GUI in many years, but wanted to put this information out there for you. I think the real magic with our clone is in the command line interface and running it with scripts or API. So how does it work? Our clone can be used to control two types of storage, remote or local. Remote storage supports a ton of providers from Google Drive, to OneDrive, even FTP or SMB shares. So this is not just a tool for interacting with the cloud. The primary storage management functions within our clone are copy, sync, buy sync, and move. Copy will take any files that exist on the first storage and make a copy of them on the second, only creating files that don't already exist. Sync will ensure that all files that are on the first storage exist on the second and are identical on the second. Buy sync will perform the sync operation, but do so in both directions, meaning that files that exist in either storage will now exist in both. Move will create a copy of the files from the first storage to the second, and then delete them from the first. So let's say you have an on-prem file share or a PC that you want to back up. You can run from command line, our clone sync, local storage, remote storage, where remote storage is any of the providers that you opt to use. This will create a copy of your data in your chosen provider. Now, why would you use this over the provider's provided sync solution? Well, there's a few reasons. First, not all cloud storage providers will support syncing from file shares, servers, or even Linux for that matter. So that platform agnosticism of our clone is nice. But also, another feature I haven't touched on just yet is our clone encryption. When you create a remote storage in our clone, just called a remote, you will point it at the provider you want to use and give it a name that you can reference. You can then create an R clone remote for encryption, called crypt in R clone, and point that at the existing remote. Now, when you go to run that same R clone sync command as before, instead of using the name of the remote that is the storage provider, you can instead target the crypt remote. What this will do is encrypt the data as it's uploaded to the second storage. You can even choose to obscure the names of the files and folders as they are uploaded. This will keep the data that you're uploading and storing in the cloud private and secure. This way, you do not have to worry about prying eyes at your storage provider scanning through your data. The one thing I will note is that encrypting your data this way will make it harder for your cloud provider to utilize compression and deduplication. So it's possible that there are providers who may not appreciate this. However, it's not been an issue in my experience with OneDrive, Google Drive, or Dropbox, which are the primary providers that I have tested this tool with over the years. In my opinion, it shouldn't be an issue at all, as you pay for the amount of storage you utilize, and you should be able to use what you pay for. But we all know it doesn't always work that way in reality. So, fair warning. One last feature I haven't touched on is the ability to serve your files with rclone. rclone can serve or mount remotes. This means that you can have your encrypted remote in the cloud with all your files nice and private, and then mount that as a local driver directory to access and read your files as if they were directly on your machine unencrypted. You can also use this to serve HTTP, WebDAV, or SFTP shares for your files as well, directly from the remotes. This really is a versatile and powerful tool. So let's show an example of how it works. I have downloaded our clone to my local machine and extracted it to my downloads folder. 
Remember, this is a command line utility, so in Windows, you either need to move your terminal to the directory of the R clone files, or you need to add the R clone directory to your path files in Windows. Once we are in the right directory, all we have to do is run R clone config to run the guided configuration tool. We can see here there is no existing configuration file. Quick tip, if there was, it would also tell you where that file is stored. So let's create a new remote by entering N. Now, we will name the remote. This will be the name you reference in your command line or scripts. So I like to make these not too long and keep them concise and clear. Also worth noting that the config file for rclone is sorted in the order that you created your config, but the command line will list them alphabetically. I will name my remote storage one. I'm not getting too fancy here. Now we can again see all of these supported storage providers. For now, let's use Google Drive by entering 17, the number associated with it here. Now, our clone has tons of docs on each provider and how to optimize your configs for the best experience with each. They will usually link to them when you create the new remote. In this case, we see there is some mention of using a client ID. For now, we're just gonna keep this very simple and just hit enter, ignoring client ID and any of the other optional features. Client secret, again, this is only for if we're using client ID. Next, we will see all of the scopes that we can apply to this remote. Again, for now, we're just going to keep it simple and use the full scope, so we enter one. This is if we wanted to use a service account. You can create service accounts for Google using the... This is useful if you want your rclone scripts to not affect the daily limit of your actual account and how it operates with the Google API. It will also allow you to limit the access of rclone to your Google account. For now, we're just gonna skip this. We're not gonna get into the advanced config in this video, so again, we will enter no. Now, this is where we will authenticate against Google. Since we are doing this from Windows, we can just use our browser to authenticate by entering yes. A window will pop up where you will sign into your Google account. It will ask you to allow our clone to access your account. And once it says that that has completed, we can go back to our command prompt here. And we're now asked if this is a team drive which is a feature of Google Workspaces. If you aren't using Google Workspaces, you can just enter no. Now we can confirm the final config and we can see that each option that we've entered is a part of that configuration block. If it all looks correct, we will enter yes. Now we are back at the main configuration tool and we can see that our storage one remote is configured and what type it is. We can edit this config from here or by opening the config file, which will be located in your user directory in Windows or in your home directory in Linux. Another neat thing to note, since we've already configured this remote for our Google Drive, if you wanted to use this on another machine, you can just copy the config file or just that block from the config file to another machine. This is how you can use browser-based authentication for your storage provider on machines that don't have GUIs. So let's use this remote. I've created a file here called my file. And if I run our clone copy from the local directory to storage one, and the colon at the end here indicates to our clone that it is a remote, not a local storage. We can see that it runs. And now if we go out to Google Drive, we should see the file copied over. Some ideas of what you could do with this tool. You could synchronize two storage servers that are either on-prem or one local and one remote as a way to back up your files. You could synchronize data between two cloud storage providers and keep the data encrypted on both. Syncing, for example, a Dropbox and a OneDrive. You could use our clone mount to store your media server files in a cloud provider instead of using local storage and serve them up with something like Plex or Jellyfin. You could use a script like that from the real Alex V to trigger an rclone copy after you take backups in Proxmox to sync your backups to the cloud. A while back, I wrote a script that would stop my Docker containers weekly and back up the volumes to my remote storage. The possibilities here are crazy, and I just wanted to bring this tool to your attention if you hadn't heard of it before. Until next time, thanks for watching.